It is said that that person who, that person has studied and completed their study of the Rig Veda, the Sama Veda, the Atarva Veda, the Yajur Veda, simply by uttering two syllables, Hapri. All the mm, Veda at the end, the study of Veda is complete only by uttering Hari. Hari. How is it possible? Mm -hmm. This is the mystery of Nam Tattva. So, if when you chant the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Chanting of the holy name is really the meaning of the religious, you know. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Now the desire to inquire what is Brahma? The supreme absolute truth. That which is the greatest. How do you inquire? By sadhana. Chanting the holy name. So you chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. This is the inquiry to the absolute truth. So when you are chanting, if Krishna appears in front of you and says, Aham Brahmasmi, it's me. <laughs> and you laugh and say, Tat yes, it's you. <laughs> and then very good, that means you are chanting purely. But if you don't experience this, the essence of all the witness, when uttering the holy name, if perhaps sometimes you sleep, if perhaps mind is wandering here and there, then it means there is some nam aparada, offensive to the name. So nam prabhu is not reciprocating, or rather he is reciprocating, <laughs> revealing offensive, or he is not re revealing himself. That's it. So. If, and speaking now, not for those who are chanting and having realization when they chant, but if someone is chanting and you are not realizing something, then you must hear deeply Nam Tattva, the principle of the Holy. Everything, if you are in that category, that second category, everything that you think you know about the Holy Name, forget it. Because if you understood the subject, you would not be making now aparat, actually. So whatever conceptions, ideas you have, forget. Start again from the build up, from the ground up, new, fresh. And here, very deeply and carefully, the science of Harinam. There are few terms that will be very helpful for understanding this subject. Let's start to build up our understanding of Nam Tattva from the ground, from the beginning. First of all, the first term is Van Manasa Gochara. Van means the power of speech. And Manasa means the mind. And Agochara means the not perceivable. It cannot be received or perceived. The holy name cannot be received or perceived by your power of speaking and it cannot be conceived by your material mind. This is the first thing. Don't think that the name is what? Jiva Dhi. Under the control of your tongue. That you are chanting. No. Now is the avatar of Krishna. Only he can descend. So first, Van Manasa Gochara. Now, how can we find out about Nam Prabhu? Our Prabhu, Supreme Lord, in the form of Akshar, syllables. So he is Nikola Praman. Nikola means all. Praman means 
evidence, proof. The word Brahma in Sanskrit, Brahma, means Yatharta Gyan, knowledge as it is. Brahma means Yatharta Gyan, knowledge as it is. Prabhupada gave Bhagavad Gita Yatharta, as it is. So, Prama means Yatharta Gyan, knowledge as it is. So, the, that by which one attains knowledge as it is, is called Prama, evidence. So, there are different types of evidence, they're called Praman Paritschet. So, the basic types are Pratyaksha, sense perception, Anuman, that means by inference, by logic, idea, by history, received knowledge, and so on. So, in classical philosophy, there are ten ways, ten different ways that you can receive knowledge. We won't go into that, that's another Brahman Tattva, that's another subject. But, what we should know is that the holy name, Nam Prabhu, is Nikila Brahman Parishchev Agochara. It is, cannot be received or perceived by investigation through all of the different methods of acquiring knowledge. Huh? I'm starting to get a picture now about Nam Prabhu. Transcendental person in the form of sound. Not so accessible. Van Manasa Gochara and Nikila from Man Parishchev Agochara. Beyond our speech, beyond our mind, and beyond all the ten classical methods of investigation. So when we take our feedback and begin to chant, should be some respect. Some we are now attempting to come into the presence of something adult, astonishing, jamatkar, something that fills us with wonder. Now, the next term, Nam Prabhu is Swapakash. Swapakash means self-effulgent or self-revealing. Just like you can only see the sun by the power of the sun. When the sun shows himself to us, we see him. But if the sun has set, you cannot go out at night with a candle or a torch or anything. So where's the sun? You cannot find. So by your efforts, you cannot know the sun. Only by the sun's mercy does he reveal himself. We should understand this about now. Only Nam can reveal himself because he's Swayam Prakash or Swaprakash, self manifest. Now the next one, Swatahasiddha. That means self existent. Self existent. This is very deep. I think today you cannot fully explore it, but I'll just give some idea. Next week we'll be in North Carolina. Who's going to North Carolina next week? Yeah, everyone just come. <laughs> you, see, you see all the people with their hands up saying they're going to North Carolina? Jump in a car. Jump in their car. They'll have a space. They just come. So because next weekend it's the um, appearance day of Srila Jiva Goswami. So we'll discuss the, this, his deep ideas on this subject. Swata Siddha self exist. Yeah? So, but anyway, the basic thing is that, you see, our mind is always imagining things. And one of the main things that we imagine all the time, in everything that we're looking at all the time, we think that all the stuff around us is self-existent. It's existing by itself. Right? If you have a balloon, and it will get bigger when you blow it up. You can understand that. And then if you don't blow it up after a few days, it shrinks and it goes down. But the things around us, we see, they're just there. No one's blowing them up and they're not shrinking. They're just existing without any effort of anyone. Right? So we feel as if the things around us are self-existent. So the symptom. And this is the main brahm or bewilderment of the living being. 
It's called Sadrashyam. Everything, there is a multiplicity of self-existent uh, objects around us. But this is not a fact, because everything around us, for example, let's say there's music. Our friend, he plays the viola. If someone is playing music, you can hear it, but the moment they stop playing, the music disappears. So in the same way, the whole world is like God's music. And if you weren't playing it, it could disappear. But not only the thing is not only not only do you can you hear it playing, but you can also feel it. Uh -huh. I mean, you can feel it, emotions, all these things. So in the moment, in the moment it, it feels very real. It's very real. Yes, it is real. The world is the world is real. It's just temporary. So the supreme Lord is everywhere. Manifesting and maintaining everything at all times, but we are thinking that the objects are self-manifest. They are self-existent. And this is why we have the absence of God consciousness, Vismriti. Krishna Bhuli Sayji Vanadir Bhanamuk. Forgetfulness of God. Though nothing can exist for a moment without God's presence there. So all the things around us, they are not self-existent, they are dependent existent. They are made of parts. And because everything is made of parts, atoms and so on, the parts come apart. And you think about it, your body is made of the, the atoms and chemicals and everything. How old are they? They've always been here, right? Since the beginning of the universe. You're a baby, then you got some food, you put that food in your mouth, it transformed and became your body like this. So something is coming in, something is going out like this. So the body is made of parts, and these parts are always here, but all the parts are in a state of flux, making different shapes which are coming together and then dissolving again. Everything is like that. So the existence of different things depends on the aggregation of their parts, but they always become separated. The problem is this, that those parts also have parts. And those parts also have parts, and those parts also have parts. But for anything to exist at the bottom, there must be one thing which is partless, which has no parts. That is the meaning of Anu. Anu means that which is Akanda, indivisible. So the concept of an atom according to Srimad Bhagavatam is Vikalpa, it is in that human's imagination. Because the Akanda, the indivisible part, which is the foundation of everything, is the Supreme Lord. Because the shape of anything depends on the arrangement, the aggregate of its parts. But if something has no parts, then its shape depends only on its own desire. And therefore, a partless being must be conscious, have jnana, icha, and kriya. Must be conscious, have a desire to be the way that he is because his shape is not dependent on any parts. And Kriya to manifest his existence, his own existence. So Bhagavatam explains, Shatit If such a thing existed as a self-existent, indivisible Akanda, Advaita part, then that would be conscious and that is actually the Supreme Lord. So nothing is Swatasiddha, nothing is self-existent, everything is dependent existence dependent on the self-existent Lord. Now, the holy name, if it's a little bit, don't worry, next week on Jiva Goswami's day, you can go, this is his explanation. But, <laughs> so jump into the car, you saw the car. Well, if you don't understand, you have to go to North Carolina. For... <laughs> That's right, thank you. And he has a footnote there to many people. <laughs> so, only the Supreme Lord is Swatasiddha, and guess what? The holy name is also Swatasiddha, self-existent. Why? Because that self-existent being, being indivisible, every aspect of him is indivisible from himself. And therefore his name, which is an aspect of him, is also Swatasiddha, self-existent, and that means omnipotent, all-pervading, all-knowing everything. 
This is the philosophical explanation of why Krishna The Supreme Lord is not different from his name and his name has us. Because that person whose existence depends only on his uh, uh, desire means that reality is whatever he desires. So when reality is whatever you desire, that means you're omnipotent. Sarva Shakti Man. And because he's indivisible, his name is, is not divisible from him. And because it's part of his swarup, therefore the name of Krishna, Nam Nam Akari Bahuda Nidhyasvara Shakti has all that. So this is the next thing you have to remember. When you <laughs> take that bee back, this is like, this is real news. This is a historic moment. You know, if you look in the front cover of the newspaper or whatever, tsunami, 100,000 people died, or a war is going on over here, or the pandemic, or whatever, this is not news. This is nothing. This is just the whole material world just comes and goes every time Mahavish debris. Over. <laughs> this is not news. This is just a non-event. The whole everything in the world is a non-event. But when a jiva takes his being back and he's about to try to realize the Supreme Lord, that's an eternal event. That's not something that's over when Mahavish debris in. That's really a momentous occasion. So remember that when you take your being back. Uh, this is a very, very special moment. Remember, oh, Nam Prabhu, you are Van Manasabhotra, beyond my mind and my words. You are Kilap, Nikila Pramana Parishchele Gotra, you are beyond the range of investigation of all methods. You are Swaprakash, only you can reveal yourself. You are Swatasita. Self-existence, so you have all Shakti, you are Sarva Shakti Man. And you are uh, Kalpana Rohita, or in the Vishnu Purana, we said, we mentioned there on the, in the list of glorifications of name. Kalpana Hana Vidyante. There is no Kalpana in the name. Uh, okay, no Kalpana. I'll try to explain it. I know it's a little difficult, but if you try, it's really worth it. Siddhanta Baliya Jiti Nakoro Alas. Jahai Te Krishna Lagi Sudhida Manas. Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pali said, Oh, this is Siddhanta? Yes. Jiti Nakoro Alas. Don't let your mind be lazy. It's a little difficult. But if you try to understand Siddhartha, then Jahoite, Krishna Lagi, Surya Damanas, your mind will become very much dritta, fixed in remembrance, in absorption of Sri Krishna. Hmm? Now, our buddhi, our intelligence, it has five vrittis, according to the Yoga Sutras and according to Kapil Dev, also in the third canto. They are Praman, that means our chitta, transforms and makes the shapes of outer objects. We discussed this yesterday, this is how we perceive things. So the first vritti is called Brahman. That means valid cognition. Something comes in front of you and you see it. Due to your chitta vritti, the movements of your chitta. That's how perception works. So that's called Brahman. Then the next one is called Vipariyai. Vipariyai is not a valid perce uh, perception, it is invalid perception. A perception that is wrong. So Viparya, you know, Vayam Dhuti Abhini Veshata Asyat Ishad Apeitasya Alright, you know, Ishad Apeitasya Viparya Yasmriti Alright? When our consciousness turns away from the Supreme Lord, we have Viparya. It means avidya ragvesh, avidya asmita ragvesh navinivesh. That is, taking what is not the self to be the self. We think this body is my self. This is avidya asmita, ego, rag, dvesh, attachment and aversion, and so on. So these are all vipariya. The next function of buddhi is called smriti, memory. 
So memory is just your intelligence retrieving some scars, impressions of past activities from your subconscious mind and bringing them to your conscious mind. If I, if I say you were chocolate, then immediately your body goes into your subconscious mind, remembers that experience last time you ate chocolate, and it's just boom, it comes into the conscious mind like that. So that's memory, the body retrieving impressions from the subconscious mind. That's why you can't do smaran of Krishna, remembrance of Krishna, unless you realize him. Because smaran technically means the bringing into the conscious mind of a past impression. Vipramosha means without loss of detail. So it's only really smaran if it comes into your mind without a loss of detail. Now what happens is very often we don't remember something fully, so we have to make up the details. So that's the next vritti of buddhi. It's called vikalpa, imagination. Vikalpa, imagination. And then the last one is called nidra, sleep. So praman, vipariyai, smriti, vikalpa, and nidra. These are the five functions of our intelligence. That's what our intelligence is doing all the time, one or more of these things. Yes, that was. You can watch the live stream again. Yes. <laughs> so, now we're talking here about Vikalpa. Vikalpa or Kalpana. It is one vritti of the mind. And actually, God is everywhere. Vasudeva Sarvam Niti. Sa Mahatma. Sudur Lavaha. Bahunam Jangana Mante, after many births and deaths, Yanavam Nam Prabhupada when a person is established in knowledge, what do they realize? Vasudeva Sarvam Niti. Supreme Lord Krishna is everywhere. Sa Mahatma Sudur But such a great soul has that understanding is very rare. So, don't think that Vasudeva hmm, is not, Vasudeva Krishna is not everywhere. He is. is everywhere. But why are you not seeing and experiencing Vikalpa? Vikalpa. Because our experience is covered with Vikalpa, this vritti. Yes, I'll go into a little bit more in detail about Vikalpa. This vritti, Vikalpa. So, Vikalpa is generally translated as imagination. But what it means is this, that there are two types of perception. Two. Nirvikalpa Pratyaksh and Savikalpa Pratyaksh. Pratyaksh means perception. So we all have these two types of perception, but it goes very fast. When we see something, immediately when we see it, we have Nirvikalpa Pratyaksh. That means a raw uninterpreted or uninterpreted experience of that object. Like the vision of a newborn baby, he also sees. But when he looks at anything, his mind, the buddhi, the intelligence does not move and identify what category of thing it is. Right? What category of things it is. So, when we first see something, it's just something, but then immediately our intelligence moves and identifies it and says, this is a horse, this is a table, this is a human, this is a house. Okay. So it happens very fast. The first moment of perception, the first moment of perception is nirvikal, uninterpreted. Then our buddhi moves, and tells us this is this particular thing. And our intelligence is telling us everything is a kind of self-existent, just standing there without the presence of God, which is impossible. Logically, it's without, impossible. But anyway, I might say, is there God or not? We don't know. But everything's just existing. As well. So that is Vikalpa. Now, in every, every word that we use, either refers to a dravya, a substance, like water, 
fire or whatever, a dravya or substance. Or it refers to a boon, a quality, like softness, sweetness, quickness. Or it refers to um, a jati, a universal, just like apple. If I say apple, right, this is a, a, a jati, because I'm not saying any particular apple. It's just appleness. The jati, the universal category of appleness. So what happens is, when someone puts an apple in front of you, you first just see something without recognizing what it is, without connecting it with its, uh, the quality, with the qualified. And then your buddhi, your intelligence moves very quickly and identifies this object in front of me has appleness. <laughs> and so it is a particular instantiation of the, un of the universal, the jati, called apple, appleness, right? So, like this. So we, what, what are we doing here? We're pressing, we're slowing down everything. Because our mind is moving quickly all the time, we don't really notice what it's doing. So the great sages whose consciousness is very deep, they have seen and they have revealed through the Shastra all the minute workings of our psychology. Right? So first there is nirvikalpa pratyaks, just a raw experience, and then our mind, our buddhi, intelligence moves, and that is called vikalpa, and identifies what substance it is, oh, it's made of earth, what quality is it? It's red and it's fresh. And what jati is it? It's an apple. And what is its kriya, its activity? Boom. It's falling from a tree. So we're doing this for everything, at every moment, we're looking at everything, and our buddhi is moving and identifying what substance it is, what activity it is, is doing, what category it is in, and what qualities it has. And when our buddhi moves in that way and identifies these things, then a word comes in our mind. And that word is the name that we're giving. Every word is a name <coughs> describing one of these four characteristics. And we remember, what are we discussing today? Nam Tlatla. If we want to know the difference between Krishna's name and ordinary names, we'll have to first know what an ordinary name is to distinguish ordinary names from Krishna's name. Right? So, all the names that we use and the words that we use and the concepts that we use that we give to things, these names are not Kalpana Rohit, free from Kalpana or free from Vikalpa, but rather they are the product of Kalpana. They are the product of Vikalpa. And it goes in two directions. I'll show you the two directions. If I say the sound, apple, you're intelligent, you hear that sound, apple, and it's the nirvikalpa pratyaksh of the sound. Oh, what is it? I don't know. Then your buddhi moves and feels that, apple. And then vikalpa takes place. Your buddhi moves and retrieves from your memory what the vibration apple refers to, and then the picture of apple comes in your mind. That's what happens. So this is one way. I say apple, and then you undergo the process of vikalpa, and then the picture of apple comes in your mind. Right? That's one way. Then there's another way around. Without saying any word, I can pull out the aforementioned fruit who shall not be named. <laughs> and when you look at the object, now it goes the other way. Instead of the sound bringing up the idea of the form, the form, you see it, your buddhi moves, undergoes the process of vikalpa to identify the jati of that object, and then brings up the sound vibration of a word connected with your memory of that object, apple. So either the sound, Apple will produce the picture, but it's mediated by the process of Vikalpa. Or the object itself will produce the sound of the word in your mind, mediated by the process of Vikalpa. 
Okay? So all words, all language, they are uh, mediated by the process of the Gautam. So though that word and language, which is mediated by the process, the, uh, the processes of the Kalpa, that is avidvaturdhi. These meanings are not the real meanings. And the sadhus are speaking vidvaturdhi, the actual meaning of words, and their vibration is transcendental. Now, it is said that the name of Krishna is Kalpana Rahita. It is without Kalpana, the movement of the Buddha. Kalpana Navidyante. This is in Vishnu Purana, this line. Kalpana Navidyante. That's in the plural, Kalpana. It is free from the Kalpanas of Jati, Gun, Dravya, and Kriya. Right? Those four things that we discussed. Okay. So, what does that mean? That the name of the Lord is Kalpana Rahita. Without Kalpana. So, you can look at the next uh, point. Shastreti Prasiddha means the notes on this page. The names of the Lord are what, does, what qualifies a name to be a transcendental name of the Lord. So, the first thing is Shastreti Prasiddha. The names of the Lord are famous. Ati Prasiddha, that means excessively famous. Where? Shastri in the scripture. And these names have a quality that is called Jotiti Pratita. Jotiti. Jotiti. Listen, when you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, it's a special kind of tea inside. Jotiti. 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 The sound is all about the Jotiti. It means immediately. Jotiti. Pratitaha. Pratita means experience. So the names of the Supreme Lord give Jotiti Pratita. That means immediate experience. Because the names of the Lord give Jotiti Pratita, immediate experience. That means that they tell the Narahita that between the name or the form or the object, and your experience is not mediated by the kalpa. It's direct, unmediated by the kalpa. Jatiti pratita. So, if that's not clear to you, we, some example is given in Shastra. There were ten people, and they were going on a journey. So, as they were going on the journey, they came to a river. When they got to the bank of the river, they found a boatman to take them across. Everyone could not fit in the boat, so he took across a few, and then he took across some more, like that. When they got to the other side, and the leader of the group said to someone, just count to make sure that we're all here. There's ten of us. So then that person was counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. This one missing. He asked a friend. He said, can you just check and count for me? So then his friend had to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know you're right. There's one missing. So some old man was nearby and he was watching this with him. Someone bemused. So they're not locals. So then he came up to the, the one who was counting and he says, Dasamas Tonasi. Dasamas Tonasi. That means. You are the tenth. And when he said, you are the tenth, boom, there was immediate realization. Ah. <laughs> We're all here. <laughs> right? So that is called Jatiti Pratita, immediate realization. So the holy name of the Lord is called Vikalpa Narahita. It is free from Vikalpa. Because it is not mediated by the movement of material buddhi, but rather, as soon as it touches your consciousness, jatiti pratita, ah, Supreme Lord appears there. At once. If he's not appearing, then, what does it mean? Satnam akarad is there. Ten types of offense to the holy name are there, and you have to make a very special effort to, again, 
So listen, to propitiate the favor of Nam Prabhu. Nam Parada Yukta Nam, Nam Aneda Haran Tikam. In Padma Prana, he said that if someone has committed offense to the name, then they should chant continuously. Continuously chanting. To try to solicit, to propitiate, to beg. Now, Prabhu, please forgive me for all of my offenses. And then we can actually experience the truth of Nam Tantra. So, this is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Nam Nama Kari Bahudani Oh my Lord, all powers are in you. But I am so unfortunate. Hmm? I am so unfortunate that I am not feeling anurag. Here the word anurag, the word anurag here means utkanta, eagerness. If you are really eager for something, you cannot live without it for one more moment. You feel as if you are about to die. That's called utkanta. Literally, ut means up. And kanta means throat. Because your soul is in the heart chakra, and when you are about to die, the pran pushes the soul up. But if you're biased, you go out that way, and make a mess in the bed, and go to hell. But if you're biased, you go up. So, the pran pushes the soul up, and out like this. So when your soul has come to the throat, that means you're on the very verge of death. That's called Utkanta. So Mahaprabhu is saying, Durdaivam Idrisha Mihajani Naraga. Due to Durdaiva, ill fortune, that means because I have made Nama Parad, therefore I am not feeling Utkanta when I chant your name. So the implication is that if any person will chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Without offense, just the touch of that name. <sighs> Krishna, Krishna, where are you? Krishna, where are you? The feeling of separation would come to rise up by the Vastu Shakti, the inherent power of Nam Prabhu. Huh? So, how to. Overcome all these things. I have given in this in this book. I have identified when a devotee sits down to chant the holy name, fifteen obstacles that stop us from nicely really taking shelter of Nam Prabhu. And there are ten solutions, ten ways in which one can overcome those fifteen obstacles and experience the Utkanta, separation. <coughs> The Vastu Shakti, the inherent power of Nam Prabhu. So all those ten points, how to overcome the obstacles, I have put together in one verse, in one Sanskrit verse, and it has it was three like, seminars I gave on Nam Tat, and it was it's been made into this book. So if you are very interested in improving your chakra, you can if you like read this very carefully and try to practice. Perhaps another time you can make a Jaffa retreat and only study this one subject. No. No. Okay. And it's called first aid. Why? It's just the first solution, not the complete solution. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to get started. Because... Guru Kripa Bina Nahi Kore Sadhanaba No sadhana has power without Guru Kripa. So we need pure Vaishnava association and Guru Seva, put this together with the chanting nicely, then what happens? Prabhu Kohe Vaishnava Seva Nama Sankirtan Dui Karo Shigra Pave Sri Krishna Charan Mahaprabhu said, by chanting the holy name without offense, and serving pure Vaishnavas, then quickly by these two things, one can attain the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. So, what will we be discussing? Vikalpa Rohita and Jyoti Jipatita. The difference between 
an ordinary word, the names that we use for things in general, and the holy name is Vikalparata. It is not mediated. Just for example, let's say your name. Your name is whatever. Peter. So that means you were born, your parents looked at the baby and said, oh. Then they had a Vikalpa and they gave a name, Peter. <laughs> you see? So the names of things are mediated by Vikalpa. But Krishna's name didn't come about like that. Krishna is Krishna. <laughs> he is Krishna. Krish means existence. Not a part of existence, but all existence. There's no existence separate from him. He's Advaya Gyan Paratattva. So Krishna means all existence. And it comes from Karshati. He attracts. He's beautiful. So Anna means Nirvriti. Not Nirvriti, Nirvriti. Ananda, joy. So Krishna is the embodiment of joy. Not some joy, or a lot of joy. All joy. There's no joy outside of Krishna. Try it. <laughs> Try to find some joy outside of Krishna and see what happens. <laughs> Anything you try to find happiness in will actually be the Dukkha Yoni, the source of all misery. So Krishna is what? Well, he is Krishna. He is all existence. He is all attractive. And he is all joy. There's no joy outside of him. There's no existence outside of him. So if you see any existence outside of him, then what are you seeing? Something that doesn't exist. That's all Maya. 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 Ya means this. Ma means not. Maya, not this. <laughs> Why? Vasudeva Sarvamiti. There's only Vasudeva. But our vision is covered by our own Vikalpa. We are projecting the Jatis, the Gunas, the Kriyas on everything. When actually, there's only Krishna. Hmm? How can it be removed? By chanting the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Ram, Hare Hare. Ah, Buddha, Buddha, you're very much good. <laughs> Giving it a sweet sound in both ears. Thank you. So, now the next point of Harinam. Sanketya Adalopi Tantrisha Prabhavaha. Very important. Sanket. Sanket means when you say the name to indicate something else. Just like Ajana, he called his son Narayan. So he was saying Narayan, Narayan, but it was not to Narayan, it was to his son. In India, you go everywhere. If you go to the supermarket, then it's whatever. Go in the supermarket. You go to the cloth store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gopal's got store like this. Oh, the, and so everyone, I, I'm going to Gopal's no, 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 to, to buy a new shirt or something. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, in, the only name is being used all the time, but not actually to refer to Krishna, to refer to something else. That is called Sankirtya. So, the, so Adi means etc. because there are four types of um, ways in which the holy name is used. Sankirtya, Parihasilva, Stogun, Helena, Evava. Sanketya Parias. Parias means for a joke, joking. You know, sometimes people on the street, they see you with the tea like and everything and they start to, Ari Krishna, Ari, Ari Krishna. So they're joking. You know, for a joke. Parias. Stogham. Stogham means for to keep time in music. Sometimes when you're singing in music, there's a gap in between one line and when you start the next line. So then, sometimes someone will throw in a holy name in the middle of that gap to fill that space. Sita Kamala Kuchamandala Hari Sita Kamala Kuchamandala Trita Kumandala So you throw in a Hari so in the middle to keep the timing. It's a slogan. Or Helena means just to say the name neglectfully. So these are Four types of Namabhas. So, Sanketya Ado means Sanketya, all the, these types of Namabhas, Api, even Tadrishas Prabhavaha. Tadrish means in this way, 
prabhav, there is an influence. So it's a reference to Jatiti Pratita. The power of the name is such that as soon as you say the name without the intermediation of your mind, Jotiti, immediately, Pratita, the form of the Lord appears in the heart. And Sankhetya Dharupi, Tadish Prabhavaha, that Prabhav, that power is there even if it's the Sankhetya or referring to something else, one of the four types of Namabhas. That power is still there. Why is it that when people say, I'm going to go pause the tailor to buy a new shirt, they don't see Krishna? Because they have Nama, they have so, so many Nama for that. But the power of the name remains, is always there in the name, even when it's Sanketya, if there's no Nama for that. What does that mean? The implication is this, that the name has Vastu Shakti. Vastu Shakti means the power is in the name, it's not in your mind. When you chant Harina, we are not like trying to do self-hypnosis. Huh? Krishna is God. Well, I'm not sure about that, but I'll just keep saying it until I believe it. Right? Chanting Hare Krishna is not the kind of self-hypnosis and trying to convince yourself. But rather, Nam Prabhu. He manifests himself there and there. The power is in Nam, so that's called Vastu Shakti. Vastu Shakti na hi budhim apekshate. The word Vastu Shakti means that it's not dependent on your intelligence, just like if there's a baby and the baby doesn't know that fire burns. He has no idea. But if the baby put his hand in the fire, what will happen? Burn. Burn. So it doesn't depend on his intelligence. It depends, the power is in the fire itself. So in the same way, the power of the holy name to do Jyotiti Pratita, immediately manifest, is, does not depend on your intelligence at all. So even if you say it referring to something else, still Krishna will appear. Only one condition is there, one should be free from the Aparaha offenses. Huh? So in Kali Yuga, everyone is kind of buried under 20 layers. <laughs> of mountains of offenses. <laughs> but it's possible to get free. How do you get free? By hearing. Srinivatam Swagata Krishna Punya Shara make to help me after one. Vidyanta. Vidyanta Sto. Vidyanta Sto Via Vidyanoti Srinivatam. By hearing Harikata. Supreme Lord comes and cleanses your heart. Nashta prays you? A mantra issue. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. By hearing the Bhagavatam and serving the Bhagavad Vaishnava. Then almost all the Abhadrani, inauspicious things with the heart are removed. So Nashta prays you, Abhadra issue. What is the meaning of Abhadrani? Or oh, here in the second verse, Abhadreshu, Abhadra, inauspicious. It means ten types of Nam Aparad. That's what it means. By hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, associating and serving pure Bhagavad Vaishnava, we become free from ten types of Nam Aparad. By which, hmm, when that is clear, then when we hear, Om Jajiti Pratita, Sporti. There and then, realization comes. So, Srimad Bhagavatam is like the Purana of the Holy Name. You will see that in each story, in each episode of Srimad Bhagavatam, there's some teaching there which is clearing away some misconception about Nam Prabhu. And by hearing, gradually we become free from all Nam Prabhu, and then we can experience the Vastu Shakti. Nam's own intrinsic power. So that's the meaning of this phrase, Sanketya Dhavapita Vishnu Prabhava, even referring to something else, saying the name. But if one is free from offense, it still has Tadrishya Prabhava, the same effect. What? Jajiti Pratita. Immediate appearance of Sri Krishna in the heart. So then, oh look at that, I made a mistake. Swata Siddha is repeated twice, I should have repeated. And so Prakash. La last thing now, last thing, Aksha Abhyas. The last phrase I want to touch today in non 
very important, Aksha Abhyas. Sri Bhaktino Thakur has written Bhajan Rahasya, the secret of Bhajan. So in the very first chapter, which is the explanation of Sri Chastakam's first verse, Chaito Dhaapanamaya, etc. In the very first chapter, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is building up our appreciation and understanding of Nam. So he gives one verse from the Rig Veda. Hmm? Om Asya Jananto Namachi Dvivittan Mahasthe Vishnu Sumati Vajamahe Om Tat Sat Rig Veda. Very important. Om Asya Jananto the rishis are praying, Oh my Lord, Jananta, we know you a little bit. Dear Asya, there's an A there, A means a little. Oh my Lord, we know something about you, but we don't really fully understand you. We know something about you. But we don't. It's only a little. Om Asya Dhyananto Namachit Vivaktan But, oh, how wonderful it is that your name is a Jit, transcendental. And by repeating it again and again, Mahaste Vishnu Sumatim Bajamahe Bajamahe means Prapnu Maha We will attain Sumatim Realization by repeating your name. So here, Bhavaktan is, we, re we repeat your name. In the commentary, Srila Jiva Goswami Bhai explains, here, it means Aksha Abhyas, the Abhyas, repetition, repetition of Aksha, the syllables. That's all it is. By the repetition of the syllables only, we will attain a full realization of you. How wonderful. So Om Tat Sat. Om means the holy name. Om is the name for Krishna. One of his holy names. Om. Tat. That's absolute truth. Sat. The word Sat here means Swatasiddha, self-existent. Because your name is self-existent, it is all-powerful, it is non-different from you and self-revealing. That's the meaning of Om Tat Sat. So, our problem is we think that, oh, I really Christian, I, I just chanted the name, I didn't realize anything. Must be something missing. Perhaps I have to add a little bit of speculation source to this preparation <laughs> to make it more delicious. Huh? No, the taste is not there due to our avidya. We don't have to add any speculation to make it more tasty. It's already sweet, it's already beautiful. But we cannot taste the sweetness due to our own avidya. But if understanding all these points we're discussing, some deep glories of the holy name, if one will relate to Nam Prabhu, see Krishna in his form of aksha, letters, syllables, ha, re, krish, na, understanding, oh, you are all powerful. And surrendering to Nam Prabhu. Chanting, 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 grasping by the Aksha Abhyas repetition, we become free from offense and then we can experience all these glories directly. So I just gave a little overview of Nam Tantra. Try to note it down, take it into your heart, and keep it with you at every moment so that when you chant, you can. Have the greatest honor for Nam Prabhu. And when Nam Prabhu we honor him, then Chakra Thakupati is one example. There was a, a very wealthy businessman, Tycoon Oligarch. And he had a servant. So the servant was doing some jobs for him. But the servant took advantage and misappropriated some of the funds. So then his master rejected him. Get out! And he went away. So then that person, he felt deep regret. 
Your life of it to show me What's the meaning of Mahfuz Ghaz? It's regret. He's showing us. Spiritual life begins with the burning. Burning. Burning with repentance. Contrition. So he felt very regretful. So he came back to his master's business. But he was not employed, he wasn't given a position. But he just worked anyway for no pay. He worked anyway for no pay. Why? Because he was trying to win back the trust of his employer. And after some time, when the employer saw that he was working so hard and sincerely for no pay, then he reinstated his privileges. So Chakravati Pai says, our relationship with Nam Prabhu is like that. Hmm? If you're chanting every day but not experiencing something, that means many offenses on them. So we have to repent and develop a new, refreshed appreciation of what we're doing. What we really have, what Gurudev has given to us at the time of Harinam initiation. And then from there we have to work. Every day, sit in one place like a statue and moving. Turn off your eyes, skin, everything, all sense. Shut down. And be absorbed. Mano mantris, to mantro, mantra mantris, tamana, mano mantra mantsalaya, tam eta di japalakshanam. This is the definition of japa. Put the mantra in your mind and nothing else, not two things. Not the mantra and your dog. <laughs> Not the mantra and your Apple. Facebook page <laughs> or anything. Just the mantra. Okay? Manoma des to mantra, mantra ma des tamana. And then put the mantra in your mind or your mind in the mantra. I was mentioning to do some devotees this morning, those who came in the morning. Will not you know who you are? <laughs> you have another opportunity tomorrow. <laughs> and the next day. <laughs> so, then if you have a box, you can put something in the box. But once you put the thing in the box, you can't put the box inside the thing. Because this 3D doesn't work like that. This three dimensional world. But the mind and the mantra is not like that. You put the mantra in your mind and your mind in the mantra. Mantra, mano, mantra, so I hope that and mix the two together that they are indistinguishable, that there's nothing in your consciousness. Your mind and this mantra, one. That's all. And stay there, in that state. And quite frankly, well, we have a vidya, it's unbearable. Oh, it's too much. And that's why we go, Eric, it's like for one night and then start looking around. Check what time is it. And get up, walk around, talk to someone. That is our vimukata. Like you, you, anyone can say, yeah, I love her, she's so cute, she's nice, she plays the cute. I saw all the cartoons. <laughs> right? But guess what? That's not Krishna. That's your Vikalpa. Do you know what's Krishna? This mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. If you love forgetting everything else and being totally absorbed in this mantra and not aware of anything else, that's called loving Krishna. Because this holy name is Krishna. So the degree to which we're attached to being absorbed in actual japa, not running two programs at the same time. Elikas is running over here, another thought's running over there. But actual japa where the mind and the mantra are completely together as one. That's called japa. So the degree to which we love this, that's the actual degree, the reality of our love for Krishna. But in our conditioned state, we have extreme aversion to God. So much duplicity. Bhagavatam rejects it. Dharma Purjita Kaita rejects all this duplicity. So at first it's difficult. But one should try and by Shat Krishna Nama Charitari Sat Sitapta Vidya Pitopa Tasya Rasanasta Narochikanu Kintu Adarad. 
Ano din ang kalusay pa Diyos ta? So, di karmat pa patitan, gabungo lahat ng tri, lupa masawin mo. Kaya siya may to say that the name, form, qualities, and pastimes of Krishna are transcendently sweet like sugar candy. But due to the journeys of ignorance, when we try to chant, it's bitter, we don't experience that sweetness. But, keep to means, but, adarat means, with adar, honor. Aludinam, every day. If you will chant every day with the utmost honor for Nam Prabhu, then gradually one's avidya is destroyed at the roots and one begins to experience the sweetness, the madurita. Madhuri means manaharita, the mind stealing beauty of Nam Prabhu. That will gradually come. So we have discussed in brief now that one in the introduction to our other that one, but I think I probably went over, so I should give chance to Maharaj to say something. So we have discussed now that one in general, and in the next part of the class we'll see how this relates to Radha Nam, the holy name of Radha. Okay, so I'll stop. Hare Krishna. If anything is not clear, you can ask a question. Yes, Maharaj. So, the example is given that when one chants Nam Abbas of the sun not, uh, not having appeared as of yet, yes. but there is light. Yes. And in due course, when the sun appears, yes. this is like Shiva Nam. Yes. So, we see that there's a time period in between that time where there's light before the sun appears. Yes. And when somebody's chanting, Nama, Nam Abbas. So, is it always the, the, fact, the fact that if they chant, without any apparat, then immediately zoop, the sun appears. No. <laughs> it goes jati pratita. Immediate realization. But it is not, that is the abbas. Remember this morning we were discussing the difference between Vishuddha Sattva, the realization of Krishna made by Vishuddha Sattva, Sattvam Visuddham Vasudeva Shabditam Tadiyate Katra Kumam Apavritaha that is the uncovered experience of Krishna, Vishuddha Sattva, in the stage of Bhav, direct experience. And before that, there's the covered experience, that is only when Chaito Darpanamajanam, the mirror of the heart is become clear, and the Abbas of Krishna Rup is reflected there, Bhagavad Bimba Brahitva, the Chitta is in Sattva Gun. And the Vishuddha Sattva Surup of Krishna is just reflected there, so the Jatiti Pratita, that experience, is the Abbas. Okay. Because on, and then, gradually, gradually, Nam, Rup, Gun, Parika, like this, and your Surup will come, and then serving internally, Manas, Manasik, Steva, then Bhav will come. When Bhav comes, that's the actual sun. So this first realization, of the Abbas of Krishna, Nam, Rup, Gold, etc. And then there's the actual Apavrita, uncovered experience in the stage of Bhav, that is Vishuddha Sattva. So this um, realization of the reflection, yes. this is like a stage of Ruchi. In the stage of Nishta, the Chitta has already become steady. Mm. So little realization of Krishna Rup and some Gun but not Madhurya. When Ruchi comes, we said this one, the definition of Ruchi, Ruchi hi, Papa Bij Nashad, Madhurya Anubhavaha. You see, in the stage of Nishta, the Papa is gone. You're steady in your practices and you're not doing any sins. But in the Chitta, there's still some, some scars, impressions, they're called Pap Bij, the seed of sins. So by practicing Bhajan, that is Bhajan and Kriya, in the stage of nishta, steadiness, those seeds of sins, those finding, they're also removed. And then when they're removed, the chitta is clean enough to accommodate 
the madhuri of the sweetness of Krishna, the sweet qualities, and then his associates, that's Ruchi, and then in a sakti, your own form, and seva begins. And then that will lead to the stage of Bhava. And all that Ruchi and Sakti, mm-hmm. that is a reflection. Yes, it's all about because it's not the Shuddha Sattva. Mm-hmm. The Shuddha Sattva, the Sheshatma, Prema Surya is not coming yet. Mm-hmm. It's in the reflection. Okay, good question. Let me clear this a little bit. Vishnu Thakur has given a nice example in this regard. He said, How can the material mind have a relationship with something transcendental? He said, if you put something inside something else, they have a relationship called Adar and Adeya. Adar means the receptacle, the receptacle, and the Adeya is the thing which is contained in it. He said that Bhakti is such that there is actually no relationship of Adar and Adeya between the mind and this, uh, this um, transcendental experience. But by the Achincha Shakti of the Lord, still one experiences this Abbas. And the Bhakti Shakti rubs against the Chitta. It's called the, the Kushrana or Samarda. Samarda, rubbing. And he gives an example of Parad, that means Mercury. And Gandak. Gandak means sulfur. If you take sulfur and mercury and mix them together, actually they don't mix. We have some chemistry students here? No? Okay. You get the mercury and sulfur and you try to rub them together. They actually don't mix. Just won't happen. But if you keep rubbing for a long time, then suddenly they mix and they change their nature and it becomes kajal. Turns into kajal. A black kajal, you know that? You take red your eyes. So, he said, in the same way, the chitta and the bhakti shakti in the form of shravanam, kirtanam, smarana, the bhakti shakti is rubbing on the chitta and it produces avilas. Avilas is desire. You know? But well, why doesn't it mix? The and whole material. We're going, we're getting there, we're getting there. So, they're rubbing, and it produces abilas. So, ruchi, another definition of ruchi is abilas, desire. What kind of abilas? Bhagavad prapt abilas. Bhagavad anukul abilas. And so hard abilas. That means the desire to attain Krishna, the desire to render favorable services to Krishna. And the desire to have so hard that we lost me suri bhav to have an intimate friendship relationship with Krishna. So these are three types of abilas, and that is the ruchi. In other words, when the realization of Krishna's form and qualities and associates is coming in the heart as an abas, then your greed is developing. Greed is not an abstract thing. I'm really like you know interested. I am a great enthusiast. I'm an enthusiast of Raghavan Bhakti. I'm very about it. I'm super enthusiastic. And that's low. That's not low. Please. That's not low. Low means that in that stage you are catching the abbas. And could I give the example like the dog outside the sweet shop? Right? There's a sweet shop, there's a glass, and there's all sweets in there, and there's a, there's a stray dog outside, you know, you've seen in India, like, hairless wonder. <laughs> so there's this mangy dog, you know, with no hair and disease, and he's outside, and no one will let this filthy dog in the shop, of course, and he's looking through the glass, he can smell the sweets, and he's salivating like anything. Why? Because he can see it. So, Chaito, dark on a marginal, first clean the mirror, see something, then, uh, we're like that mangy dog. Well, I am, not you. <laughs> you are a great personality, but I like that many dogs. Why are you called reflection if he's actually seen the sweet? Because it's not direct. Chitta is like a glass. The analogy is not exactly. Gurudev is giving this analogy. Marco is giving that analogy. Gurudev is giving this analogy. 
this plate on this planet, but he's not, he can access it. Yeah? So, he's seeing. Ha, ha, I want, I want. Sometimes a person will come out of the street shop and he was eating a rascula in a leaf plate, and he bit it. Oh, and he was dribbling down his chin and some drops off his chin into the leaf plate. And he came outside and he threw the leaf and the dog jumped on his <laughs> licked some, got some taste. That means a Maha Bhagavad Vaishnava. He's tasting the Rasa of Krishna Lila. All the juice is coming down. <laughs> and he comes to you outside. <laughs> and by his mercy you can taste a little bit what it's like to actually experience that sweet. Eh? You see? So by, by the cleansing of the heart and some internal experience, and by the mercy of a pure Vaishnava, hello, our greed is growing. Eh? And so these three types of abhilas come. But in the stage of ruchi, the abhilas are buddhi purvaka. Buddhi purvaka means that you have to intentionally seek out that sanskar in your heart. In other words, you're not feeling the abhilas at every moment, but when you take your japamala and then you begin to chant, and you remember a verse, Baha Pidam Natavarga Puhu Kana Yokai Kana how Krishna is decorated with a peacock feather and he is coming out of Nandagal in the morning playing his flute surrounded by his covered voice making beautiful footprints in the dust of brass so Padaramanam Pramisadhi Takiti Hare Krishna Hare like this some volition volition intention is there and when you do that then the Abhilas there's some Spurti and the Abhilas is coming so that's what Buddhi Purvaka preceded by the application of your own volition but when you come to the stage of asakti, then it's called swarasiki. The abdulas is swarasiki, natural. You don't even think about it. You don't have to make an act of volition and blow yourself and you're so attached. No. And it's always that Bhagavad Prat Abhilas, Anukul Seva Abhilas, so hard abhilas. So that means now the Shabdan Kirtana Smart is rubbing more, 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 more. And then what happens? Just like the gandak, the sulfur, and the para, the mercury, suddenly mix and become one. So what happens? The chitta, on which it was reflected and rubbing, suddenly melts and becomes one with that. Adilas. And that's the definition of bhav. Ruchi vis chitta masrinya kridaso bhavu chate. Shuddha sattva visheshatma prema suryam susamya Ruchi vis chitta masrinya kira, it means that the chitta masrinya is melted by what? Ruchi bihi, these three types of ruchi. They appeared in the stage of ruchi, but they were not strong enough. It was just the samadha going on. And when it gets stronger and stronger, stronger ruchi vis chitta masrinya, the heart chitta melts and becomes one with the swabhaviti, natural and uh, desi save the desires, and that is the stage of Bhav, Shuddha Sattva Vishesha Atma, that is Shuddha Nam. Uh, uh, huh? Is it clear now, Maharaj? It's clear, but uh, you, you brought up another point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Maharaj. I've been meaning to ask him this for months. <laughs> because, you take permission from Maharaj for us. Please. 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 Uh, okay. <laughs> so, on one hand, you, you, you said, <laughs> yeah. I'm very happy to see you, my dear friend, after a long time. Very fortunate today. He talks about you so fondly. So, brain Roger. So, so. Yes, Maharaj. On, on one hand, you say that we should have the mind enter into the mantra and the mantra enter into the mind yes. and, at that, and don't do any vikalpa or yeah. any other Harinam Nikalpanam one of the ten offenses, right? Harinam Nikalpanam to in, superimpose a material conception onto the name so all of our conceptions are material actually I mean, right. in the conditioned state okay, yeah. but now you're saying that in the stage of Ruchi that the devotee may with some volition, mm -hmm. with the help of 
Baha be done that yes, 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 yes. Can your can yes, yes. So when one is doing that, then now it's not just the mantra entering, entering into the mind and mind entering into the mantra, mm -hmm. but you're utilizing something else. Yes, yes. So can you because, tell that? Yeah, yeah, because in that space, mantra really, truthfully, mm -hmm. Mantra Maya Pasana is not actually really performed until the stage of Asakti. Okay. Really. Okay. No? I okay. mean, Gurudev would talk about, I'll remember a verse and it's not yeah, yeah. like But one day I said, we're in Gopinath Pogam, and I was alone with him in this room. I said, Gurudev, what's the stage when you could actually do Mantra Maya Pasana? I said, Asakti. <laughs> but but no, no, what it is, now remember that hearing, chanting, remembering, all three of them, they go along the stage of if the chitta is pure, you do group, uh, group kirtan, and the group kirtan will produce a spurti, and that's group smaran. Mm -hmm. So it is not like an ordinary person just speculating. But that person in that stage of root or asakti, if you say, which is the best verse in Srimad Bhagavatam for root dhyana, right? Gurudev says the three verses in Srimad Bhagavatam which are the best for root dhyana. One by Blood Brahma, now Nijitei Prabhapasaita Nidambaraya, one by the Dvija Patnis, Shamamira Niparidim Paramalya Baha, and the best one is by the Gopis. Okay? These are Rukya. So he's not like thinking Astakali Lila. He's qualified. Rupa Shravanena Tadudo Yogyata Bhavati. He's qualified for the awakening of the Rup. So he's saying a verse which is relative to his qualification, which is bringing the appearance of Rup's Maran. And then Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Okay. So it's, 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 it's appropriate for that stage. A root of yarn is quite appropriate for that stage. So before that, when one is going through the Anatta mm -hmm. then what's appropriate is to really just focus on now. Uh -huh. Okay, now, I'm glad you brought this up, Maharaj, and the reason is this. The other day, our most dear, beloved God, Vajradishwaru Prabhu, he brought up this point. He said, Gurudev used to tell us, Sometimes, or you should ch chant her now and then chant the verse like this and then chant again like this. Should we do that or should we just hear the name? So this morning, I told the past time when someone asked Gurudev about this and he turned to a new person and said, can you remember my father? Mm. And that new person said, I've never seen your father, how can I remember him? Gurudev then turned to the verse and you see? Exactly. So start with the name. So Gurudev has given two types of instructions, one just here. And on another, again, Srila Prabhupada used to give that instruction. That was the main instruction that Srila Prabhupada gave. Mm -hmm. He used to say, here, 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 become clear, clear, clear. Constantly. In fact, one time a devotee came to Srila Prabhupada and said, Oh Prabhupada, when I'm chanting, then my mind is going here and there, you know, it's hard to control. What should I do? Prabhupada said, you chant with your tongue and you hear with your ear. What does your mind have to do with it? <laughs> See, it's such a powerful way to say, you just hear that vibration. That's all. So Srila Prabhupada and Gurudev, other great Acharyas, you can see in the Upadeshavali of uh, Bhaktisthan Sotapur as well, in the last one, is that just chant and hear the name. And after some time, if you're very persistent and very determined, after some time, Nam Prabhu will re reveal his beautiful swarup. And if you go on chanting gradually, gradually, the rest of your anathas will go and all the lila and everything will be revealed. It's the last teaching in the Upadeshavli of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhartha Sarvata. So those instructions are there. But then on the other hand, there are times Gurudev has said, oh, you chant this verse, or like you, when you're chanting, you can do Parakrama Govada in your mind or something. So why is this? Just like I mentioned before, to really do that actual japa, mm. for the very conditioned soul with ignorance, is almost unbearable. Right? It's very hard. So just to encourage the neophytes, mm. then Gurudev would say, oh, you remember this past time, remember that past time. It's not actually Leela's actually. But 
It's better than thinking of Miami Beach. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you don't have gen taste in the name and you're feeling aversion, then even though you might do your best to complete your rounds, but while you're chanting, you tend to think about your own pastimes. <laughs> yeah? And you make more nama parad. So Gurudev used to say these words of encouragement for people, but due to not understanding Siddhanta, people are thinking, oh, I'm doing Lila Svarana. And that's why this morning we were discussing Vidva Ruti, the actual meaning of the word Sravanam, the actual meaning of the word Kirtanam, and the actual meaning of the word Smarana. Okay? So it's like a concession for the Niva to help them just finish their rounds, do their rounds, maybe increase their rounds, have an interest, remember some of the impressions, whatever they have from Parikrama and so on, like that. Then when they get to a certain state of purity and understanding, then they actually do Japan. Then they're just hearing. And then everything opens. Yeah? Concession. <laughs> yeah, it's a concession. Now, the, but the best way for that concession to take place is in the context, context of our channel. Let's say, let's say you, you have Diksha and now you're serving your deities, right? So you have to serve your deities, you offer 16 articles. Mm -hmm. This morning you said the verse. Iti murti abhidani na mantra moti ma moti kam. Narguni said to Vyasadev, this mantra has a, is, has a vigra, a form. So in the commentary on that verse, Srila Vishwatami Thakur, he said that the Supreme Lord has agreed to manifest his beauty to that person who worships him with 16 articles. So does Upachar. So that's what Upajari does every day. And they do the, the puja offering 16 articles. etc. He does the 16 articles. So this is Archan. So then, when you, uh, you're doing this archan, then you have to pray. There are mantras that you have to say while you're doing the archan. So this means, now I meditate, I'm in Vrindavan. The river Jumuna is flowing. The trees are full of flowers and blossoming creepers. It, the whole dam is more shining than a million suns. That place is untouched by the six whips of hunger, thirst, fatigue, old age, and so on. There's a beautiful golden throne, Radha Krishna sitting, and so on. So this is smara, right? It's a kind of smara. But it's actually not the anger of bhakti called smara. Aha, yes. So for the neophyte who actually cannot do smara, his so-called smara is actually a sublim of the of the anger of bhakti called archan. You see? Rupa Goswami describes in Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu, there are 64 angers of bhakti. Some of the angers are one activity, and some of the angers are a complex of activities. So for example, one anger of bhakti is if the deity is going on procession, you should follow him. So that's just one thing. Then another anger of bhakti is archan. But in archan there are many things. Putting on tilak, offering boga, decorating, cleaning the temple. That's, it's, a, it's a whole complex of many things. So, Jim Goswami uh, said, very interesting. I think Pakistan Dharma Anuj 309. Yata. Kirtana smarana par sevanam mayam upasanam eva agam ukta vidi mayatva vishishtyapati archanam itya vidiyate tato na vivikta twat. The meaning is this that if a person is engaged in chanting or remembering or serving the lotus feet, According to the Vidhi, the direction, the instructions in the Agama Shastra, that means the Vaishnava Tantra, the Archan Deepika and all these things, the text of Archan. Then, that practice is actually Archan. That's actually Archan. So, uh, Gurudev said that on a few occasions, he said, when I do Archan, it's Seva. But when you do Smaran, it's Archan. 
Indeed. Vajan Bahasya. And uh, in the introduction to Vajan, there's a difference between Vajan and uh, Archan, right? So I just quoted the line of Jiva Goswami where he said, even Smaran, which is done according, then, then you say someone is chanting, thinking, oh, now Krishna's doing this at this time and everything. It's not a sporty, it's not coming from a sporty. They read something in the scripture and they're remembering according to the direction of scripture. That is not actually the anger of Bhakti called Smaran. That is the Andhra Bhakti called Archan. It's an include in Archan. So even though the neophytes can do Smaran to a limited degree, it's better if he will do it within the context which is recommended for him, the path of Archan. And that will, then his remembrance will be directed in, in a nice way, you know? Like in Archan, when you wake up in the morning, as soon as you jump out of bed, what do you say? Jayati Janani Vaso, Devaki Janma Vado, Yarubara Parishatva, Dorvira And then what do you say? Vidakta Gopala Vilasi Yanam, Sambhoga Chinam Kittasarva Gatra. Oh, I remember Krishna is surrounded by very clever Kalim Gopis, and they've made marks all over his body. So that's Maran of Krishna in the morning, right there from the beginning of your Archan practice. But that's Maran, though it's rustic and beautiful, and though it's one pointed towards Vrindavan and your Sampandagya. But it's actually Archan. In that stage, gradually, gradually, when one comes to mature, and the, uh, the, the, one becomes free from two things what? Kadaya Shio, impious activities, and the Kshitta Chitta, the distracted consciousness, then you can just chant and hear and be. Manifestations of Nahu Kamu Vaiva. So, Krishna Skaraj in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita said, Bau Jani Yani Kori Shavana Kirtan Tabutana Pai Krishna Pari. You can chant Hare Krishna for many lifetimes, but you will not attain Krishna praying because of offenses. So, Tabu Jani Tahi Te Aparada Prachur Krishna Nama Vijay Tahi Nakare Ankur. If a person is chanting, then it's to be understood that that person has many offenses if Nam Bij is not Ankur, sprouting. The name should sprout, the form, the qualities, the associates, the past that. And if that sprouting is not taking place, the only reason is Nama is there. So to overcome Nama Parad, one takes shelter of Shri Guru, receives Diksha, is engaged in Archan under his guidance, becomes free from the oscillating mind and uh, bad activities, has some samskaras of a sambandha gyan, then he can chant Nashta Praesho Bhadraesho Nittam Bhagavastevaya Bhagati Uttamashloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiti Comes in Nishta and then Ruchi taste and all the realizations unfold. So this is something of the relationship between Nam, Sravan, Kirtan and actual Smaran and how Archan is a preliminary activity, especially to facilitate the neophyte in attaining the actual experience of Bhakti, Shravan, Kirtan, and Smarta. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it said, Archayam evahare puja yasareyate nata bhakti shuchanyesu sa bhakta prapita smartaha. The neophyte devotee is somewhat materialistic. What does he do? Archayam. He believes in the deity and in his guru. He doesn't know how to properly associate with other Vaishnavas. Properly. He hasn't developed that um, understanding of Vaishnava Tattva yet, but anyway, he has faith in the Archan and that process. Gradually, he'll come to the Madhyam stage where he has love for the devotees, friendship with all the devotees. Prema Maitri Kripo Piksha Sakaroti Samad Yamaha Gorgeous. Sadhu, Sadhu. When am I going to get to Radhanath? <laughs> <laughs> okay, tomorrow morning. <laughs>